welcome to the Elderwood Craft Podcast. I'm laughing because this is about attempt number five. Um, my name is Emma and this is my place to talk to you about all the things I've been making since we last met. Today is Sunday the 27th of June and you are all very welcome here, viewers new and old, so grab yourself a cuppa and your craft of choice and we will get settled in. There will be show notes in the description box underneath the video and in those you'll find links to all the projects that I've been working on and other makers that I talk about um, and so on. You'll also find a link to my own website which is eldenwoodcraft.com where I, I know I said this last time but I really do think I will start to put the show notes um, going forwards. My website is also where you can buy my handmade project bags and notions, pouch, notions pouches and soon I will be expanding that range into other things as well. Uh, in today's episode we've got a little bit of admin to get started with, I've got some uh, a prize for the make along that we've got going on and I've got a handful of finished objects to share with you as well as a couple of things currently on my needles um, and then at the end there'll be a section um, where I tell you about future plans for Eldenwood Craft which is very exciting. I know I alluded to something happening last podcast which was three months ago, I'm sorry, um, but I shall reveal all today of you um, don't follow me on Instagram, you will not know about this. If you do, then you might find something new anyway. Okay, let's get started then. I hope you're all well, by the way. Um, everything is fine here. We're very busy with um, life stuff, which I'll fill you in on in a little while. Um, but first off, let's kick off with some admin. And most importantly, um, the prize draw for the first quarter I know we're nearly at the end of the second quarter. Hangs head in shame. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the Eldenwood Craft Make Nine Along, which is a um, knit along that we're running throughout the year where you identify nine things that you want to make. Uh, it could be type of thing, it could be specific project. Uh, and you post your chatter in the chatter thread on Ravelry and your finished objects in the finished object thread also on Ravelry. Uh, you can also post in Instagram if you cannot use Ravelry and there are details about how to do that um, all one or two episodes ago. If I remember I will pop a link up here uh, so you can find that information out. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so there are prize draws at the end of every quarter. So the first quarter was January, February, March. It's now June and I'm only just drawing. Um, and I do apologise, but better late than never, I think. Yeah. Um, so the prize, I, I drew the prize by random number generator last night as I was planning. Yes, there is planning that goes into this, but as I was planning, um, and the, let me show you the prize first actually. So this is, um, what I'm doing for prizes for, for, for this, for, for this current prize draw and for the prize draw that is ending in June, at the end of June in just a handful of days. Um, I have purchased some yarn from two Somerset yarn dyers and that will be the prize. The first one um, I have here, the second one is on its way to me. Um, so next time I record um, I will announce the May, April, May, June winner. But for now we've got a skein of yarn from lovely Loom Wool. Uh, so Loom is um, run by Jess who lives in Somerset and this beauty of a skein of yarn is her faded seaside glamour colourway. It's absolutely stunning. I would really like to keep that myself but 
I can't. And, um, so I, I drew the prize. I, I did the random number generator thing. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, the prize, uh, the numbers were taken from Ravelry and from Instagram. And the post the the post that is the winner i'm really sorry i'm not explaining myself very well at all you can tell it's been a few months anyway so the post that is the winner actually came from the ravelry thread it was post 18 and that is um isabella 106 so well done i'm guessing your name is isabella i um didn't make a note of your proper name but I did notice that you live in Surrey so um, you might be just down the road from me I don't know um, but either way pop me details of where I can send the prize off to you and I will do that in the next well as soon as I hear from you um, if I haven't heard from you by the time I record again I will uh, draw another winner um, in the way that these things happen oh, dear me dear me right so that's that's prize draw oh. right so that's the prize draw for quarter one quarter two I I don't have quarter two quarter two is in the post I hope uh, or will be soon <laughs> I, I ordered it this weekend I had a very lovely um prize donation um a couple of months ago six weeks ago um which i have been sh saving uh to share with you this will be the prize for the finished objects posted in april may june july july august and september so when i record in october this will be what the prize winner wins look at that Right, actually, look at that. It's uh, tissue paper and a box. You want to see what's inside? Okay, so um, this is from my lovely friend Sherry, sh who runs the um, Sherry Iris Yarn Dyeing Company and has the um, very lovely Sherry Iris Bloggy Pod here on YouTube. And uh, I, I was blown away when this came in through the post. Um, Sherry, you've been very generous. Thank you. Let me start. There are three things to share with you. So um, I'm going to unwrap it really carefully. So the first is this beautiful skein of yarn, uh, 100 gram skein and a mini. And this is Sherry's number six colorway. lovely isn't it really pretty very much my colors that will be accompanied by some stunning open these, some stunning postcards oh, i love these so much Wren is one of my most favourite birds. And there's long tail tits and a uh, woodpecker and Mr. Toad. Uh, I was watching Sherry's, um, not her most latest podcast, but um, a, a fairly recent one. And she was talking about having some stationery in her shop soon. So that's really interesting. And all those pictures were drawn by her son, I believe, um, who does all the artwork for the um, Sherry's ball bands. And then the other part of the prize uh, is exquisite. Oh, it's so delicate, beautiful. It's a lovely, oh, just notice that. It's a lovely little pouch to pop your knitting into. That'll, that'll fit a sock really nicely, sock project or a little project, and a nice little um, oh, lavender pouch. So, Sherry Han makes these. She's such a talented lady. 
and um, yeah so that is the prize for finished objects shared in the Ravelry group or on Instagram uh, for July, August and September. So yeah, winner's in for a treat there. Right, um, what have I been working on? I've got a few things to show you. Quite a few finished objects given that it's been three months and a couple of works in progress. Um, I've got them all in my oh, podcasting box here and I'm just literally going to take from the top in no particular order. So first off I wanted to use up some of my odds and ends and I cast on and finished a litmus cowl. The litmus cowl is a pattern by Amy Florence of Stranded Dye Works fame and it's a really nice simple um, long cowl that you wrap around your neck. Uh, it uses one skein of um, one skein of this grey colour and then I had odds and ends from other older projects of this um, beautiful copper and some other darker greys and lighter greys. So I just mix them all together and that's the, the the what you get it's it's a really nice mindless knit um a little bit of concentration for counting the rows but otherwise really really straightforward i will pop it on for you shall i if i can hmm oh my hair's gonna mess up never mind There we go. Perfect for June weather. <laughs> Although actually today it's as miserable as anything. It's about to start chucking it down. But anyway, there we go. That is that is it. Really like it. Uh, and I quite fancy making another one with some other maybe mini set. Anyway, let me take it off. Um, It knit up really quickly and really straightforwardly. The only thing I had a problem with was grafting the ends together. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, but somewhere in here, it's just very, there we go. It's, it twisted itself. Oh, it keeps, oh. There is a little, something that's not quite right. It's not quite twisted, but the, um, I obviously didn't line the stitches up when I was grafting them properly enough or well enough. It doesn't bother me. I will um, attempt a better grafting next time round and when it's all curled up on itself you wouldn't notice anyway. Uh, and it could be, you could think maybe it was one of those infinity cowls that is supposed to have a twist. So designer's choice, knitter's choice, I, I don't know what I'm saying. So yeah, really pleased with that. I look forward to wearing that. Um, when the weather gets a little bit cooler. So, litmus cowl. I can't, oh, I know there are some yarns from, like the copper is lay family yarns. I knit a pair of socks out of that. The dark gray is a bird street yarn. And this lighter gray is also a bird street yarn. I cannot remember what my um, middle gray is at all. Or the lighter gray can't remember anyway there we go I like that very much socks I've got a f one two three pairs of finished socks to share with you pair number one this is a simple vanilla sock there are two it is knit from it's an opal yarn. I can't remember the colourway name. I don't have the ball band any longer, but it's really pretty. And um, I did a two by two rib at the top, a German short row heel, and a plain bog standard wedge toe. These socks are knit for um, a charity appeal that um, Jeanette 
is running um for so Jeanette's daughter is a paramedic at West Mid West Midlands Ambulance Service and Jeanette wants to um gather 500 pairs of knitted socks for all the staff at West Midlands Ambulance Service in time for Christmas um which is an immense task um and this is one pair, so 499 others to go. I know that lots of people have been knitting socks for Jeanette. Um, uh, Angela from the Yarn and Yarns podcast um, is doing an awful amount of work for that. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots of people working on it and I will be sending these off to Jeanette uh, this week now that I have shown them to you. It's the first time I've knit with opal yarn. I liked it a lot. I would like to knit some more um, opal with more. I'd like to knit more socks with opal yarns. Um, I do like, I like a commercial yarn. Um, yeah, anyway, there we go. Right, pull those off. On the pile there. The next pair of socks, I can't really tell you an awful lot about them because I have no idea what the yarn is, where it came from, and why I have it. But I can show you them and I will show you them because they're really pretty. There we go, two of them. So the pattern the sock pattern is a Rose City Roller, uh, which is a simple um, shorty sock by Mara Catherine Brimer, if I remember rightly. I knit these uh, on 2.25mm needles, as I did with the West Midland Ambulance Service socks, and they didn't take me very long at all. They were knit, they were started for a a um, couple of long car journeys that we've had recently um, yeah very very pretty I do like that if anyone recognizes the yarn do let me know um, I just I cannot think how I came to have this it wasn't a full wasn't a full ball it was it was wound in a gobstopper there were about 30 grams left of that gobstopper and I managed to get a full sock minus the toes so the toes had a uh, just a basic gray i think i don't even know what gray it is not very informative today am i i'm sorry um but yeah really pleased with those perfect little shorty socks for summer off with the socks on there right the other finished socks i have we'll just go on the blockers Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, these are a pair of slouchy wintry socks. There we are, there are two. Um, this is DK weight yarn. Rico Essentials, it's not sock yarn, it has no nylon in it, but they were knit for someone who I promised to provide a pair of socks, or to knit a pair of socks for, for their business. They wanted a pair of socks in a specific colour to use in sort of branding shots and things like that. So I knit these up for her. Um, told her they're ready but she hasn't claimed them so they're kind of a little bit redundant they're a little bit on the big side for me but if um if they are not claimed i will wear them later in the winter um but if you're watching and you want them um you know who you you know who you are uh they're ready for you <laughs> um but i was i was keen to knit a pair of dk socks anyway because i would like to knit some for my husband dennis uh, for the winter, so this was a good, good way to practice. I just did a uh, one by one cuff, a one two three by one rib, and another German short row heel, and a wedge toe. Pretty colour, grey blue. 
anyway. So yeah, three finished socks in the last three months. That's not so bad. What else have I got in my box? Okay, this uh, I am not putting on because it's way too warm, but I have a finished sweater. I'm really pleased to have it off the needles, uh, but it might be going back on the needles. It's my stripes sweater, patterned by Andrea Maori. I'm going to stand up so you can see it. It's been folded so it's got a bit of a crease on it. Look how lovely and drapey it is. It's lovely, it feels feels really soft. The, the yarn I knit this out of, uh, it's all drops Nord yarns in um, six, one, two, three, four, five, six different colours. All the details are on my Ravelry page for this and all the, the uh, projects that I'm talking about today. However, I'm not, oh, I'd love the pattern. I was really excited about knitting it, but I'm not overly happy with the finished item and the reason being it's a cropped it's a cropped hello <laughs> it's a cropped sweater uh in the original pattern and in my head let's sit down again in my head i don't do cropped sweaters but actually i think i might have to try because i think i quite like them um i i had always been a little bit self-conscious about showing off my tummy um, it is what it is, um, but I don't really like how long I've knitted it. You can see it's not the most flattering when it's on, I think is what I'm trying to say. And I think it would probably look a whole heap better if I did cut it down a little bit and wear it as a crop top. So I'm, the more I talk about it, the more I'm talking myself into frogging back and cropping it maybe round about the round about here this gray band here maybe one anyway lovely pattern nothing wrong with the pattern it's the knitter who um made a bit of a booby there i knitted more than i needed to <laughs> but yeah it's and the the yarn is lovely i've knit a few things out of drops nord it wears well uh, it's very cosy. It's incredibly soft. I can't quite get over actually how soft this is. Um, would I knit another one? Possibly, but there's a million other jumpers I want to knit, so it's not going to be. I'm not going to cast it, another one on soon. But who knows in the future? Okay. Right, that's it for finished objects. Next on the pile is a sock that I've been working on. A pair, pair of socks. We don't just work on one sock, do we? <laughs> um, so this is actually technically a half finished object. I love these. I love these. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but this is an unblocked Moss Eccles sock. This is a beautiful pattern by Kay of the Bakery Bears podcast. The yarn is gorgeous. It's from Fee at Flourish Fibres. Um, now, I don't think Fee is dying at the moment. Um, but I will show you the ball band so you've got her details and this is her superwash merino nylon 7525 base um, hand dyed in the Cotswolds and it's in the colourway midsummer really lovely here is the cake and I can show it to you free of any uh, needles and things because I haven't cast on the second one yet are we going to focus? Possibly not. There we go. I love looking at yarn caked up. 
don't think I'll ever get bored of looking at that. So this is really nice. It's it's very slightly tonal, um, really soft and squishy. And here is the, let me see if I can show you a picture of the finished socks. Yeah, so there is the pattern. Moss Eccles Socks uh, by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. You can see that Kay's are long socks and obviously mine are a short version. Just fancied knitting some shorty socks, um, seeing as it's the summer. Um, you can see the stitch pattern more clearly in that picture than you can see on my sock. Uh, but it's a really simple, memorable six or seven row repeat. I can't quite remember. Um, yeah. Knitting it on 2.25 millimetre DPMs, which is unusual for me. Normally I knit Magic Loop on Chiao Goose, but I'm knitting on higher, higher uh, stainless steel, higher, higher stainless steel DPMs. Uh, and thoroughly enjoying the process of knitting with DPMs, actually. Um, so I think that might be my, my needle of choice for socks for a little while. I love how, as a knitter, as a maker, you can switch between different types of tools for knitting your projects and um, just change it up a little bit when you feel the need to. Keeps it interesting, doesn't it? Um, what else can I say about those? Not much, really. Just really happy with them. Oh, so yes, what I can say, I did a one by one uh, twisted rib cuff. I don't know how well that's going to come out. Heel flap and gusset uh, and Kay's umbrella toe, which is a nice way to finish a toe off. So those are the current socks on the needle, on my needles. I'm keeping them in this fun project bag, um, which is one of mine from my recent shop update. I am going to talk to you a little bit about my shop at the end of the podcast and show you what's in there currently because for a change I actually have some bags in there but yes this is this is um my veggie sock bag which I really like okay on the floor the final work in progress I'm going to show you today is a blanket I do have some other blankets active and on the go but um I won't show them to you this time what I am going to show you is my habitation throw, which is a beautiful pattern by Helen Stewart, who is Curious Handmade. Um, and the yarn I am using is um, Sherry Iris. Her, I always get this wrong, but I'm sure it's her Wildflower Minis collection. So each month she brings out some yarn inspired by a um, wildflower. And I have been knitting two of the 20 gram minis into the blanket and uh which is the right way around this is this is the progress that i have made i did show it to you in my last uh, podcast but there has been some fine old progress So, um, shall I tell you what the flowers are? So at the bottom, the first two, the green and the paler, white and grey, are um, snowdrops. Then the next two are, is hellebore. The purple and the purple and bluey colour are tulips. Then the stripe of blue and the one above that is lilacs. Is that right? Snowdrop, hellebore, tulip, lilac, no. Okay, from the bottom, the first two are snowdrop, next two, hellebore, then it's tulips, and then I made a mistake. So the, see the thick band of blue, and the one above that, that is bluebell, of course it is. Then um, the pink this row here and this stripe here 
that is lilac and then i just started this week this weekend this peachy color which if you i don't know if you'll see but close up it looks just like um the the wrappers of the little chewy sweets we used to get when we were little called fruit salads <laughs> do you remember that uh and i am just in love with this i really look forward to getting sherry's parcel oh hello I really look forward to getting Sherry's parcel in the post each month and as soon as that comes in pretty much that is what I work on um, in the evenings when I'm watching stuff on television. There's the um, current ball that I'm working on, it's really pretty. The next one that's going in, oh I didn't say, did I say what the flower, flower was? I don't think I did, so it's honeysuckle. So honeysuckle so you can see the peachy color honeysuckle and then the next one that will go in in the honeysuckle collection is this beautiful uh sort of browns and mauves love that one that's possibly my favorite mini so far from all the collections lovely i can show you the other one mm. Mm, no, I can't because I've got last month's in my little box as well. I haven't taken those out. Uh, yeah, I won't show you them. But yeah, they're really lovely. Sherry's yarns are beautiful. So yeah, really pleased. Thoroughly enjoying this. Um, yeah, I've got a little, I've got a few more stripes to go, I think, until I'm halfway through. And then it, it, um, you sort of, you knit it in that shape you get halfway and then you start decreasing so it should be it should be a square when it's finished um it's a very simple knit but engaging and i love 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 the i cord i don't know if you'll see that the i cord edging just gives it a really nice finish I am knitting these on Chowgoos. I don't know the needle size. I think I might have changed needle size from what the pattern asks for because I didn't have the right needles and I didn't particularly want to buy a new pair of needles. Um, actually, probably more realistically, I just wanted to cast on there and then and didn't want to have to wait for new needles. But anyway, so yeah, Habitation Throw, pattern by Helen Stewart, yarn by Sherry Iris, love it this is this and my moss eccles socks are making me a very happy knitter at the moment uh yeah so that's pretty much everything that i'm going to tell you about my knitting today i'm just going to have a brief pause and then i will come back to talk all about the news that's going on in my life okay uh, it's got really dark outside, um, so apologies if the light isn't great. Um, I just realised you can see my bin in the corner there, never mind. Uh, uh, yeah, so the light, not great. If it's a bit dark on screen, I apologise. I shall see what I can do in editing. <laughs> right, news. I've got some... I'm going to tell you about the future of Elden Craft. I'm going to tell you what's going on in my shop. Let me just get my box. I am going to tell you about an acquisition that I have made and I've got some questions to answer. So that will be what is coming up in the next little while. If I don't ramble on too much longer, I have got a couple of books to tell you about, but I think might need to um, put that off until another episode to show my bra strap right <laughs> let me start off just because it's sitting in front of me with um an acquisition so i bought not long ago um kay jones's new blanket pattern the jelly roll blanket um which is um re i really really want to make it i haven't cast it on yet but i had in my head that i was going to um knit it using sherry iris's bird 
um, she's doing a collection of yarns inspired by birds. So I've bought um, these recently. They are her Wren minis. Browns and orangey colours. Oh, I love these. Love, love, love them. There's her artwork. Um, but then I had a bit of a reality check. And I thought, I probably need to just hold off a, a little while before I, A, throw myself into um, spending even more money on yarn when I've got a lot of yarn in my um, stash that I need to work through. However, these are just so lovely. I'm not very good at getting camera to focus. There we go. Anyway, so purchased will definitely be used because they are stunning, but maybe not on the jelly roll blanket at the moment. Um, when I finish my habitation, mm, no, habitation throw is going to last all year. I've got my crochet blanket for my daughter, which is coming to an end. So when that is finished, then I will cast on the jelly roll blanket. And then, um, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Sherry also really kindly sent me her lovely new pin. Oh, come on camera focus, be kind to me. Wants to focus on my face all the time but not on what I'm showing it. If anyone knows if I'm doing anything wrong then let me know. There we go. Isn't it pretty? Nice, F simple flower, rose gold, rose gold rose. <laughs> uh, I don't know if she has any more of these in her shop, but oh. uh, yeah, it's really pretty. Reminds me of um, oh my god, my head is all over the place. Okay, the reason my head is all over the place is um, because we're about to embark on a big life change. So I am I'm a woman in my very early 50s. I have worked in the NHS for, oh, I joined the NHS in 1997. Um, so I've worked in the NHS for 20 odd years. I've worked since, um, graduating so I've worked not pretty much non-stop for 30 odd years apart from about four or five months uh, maternity leave when I had my daughter at the beginning of August giving it all up which is a little bit scary but incredibly exciting so my daughter goes off to uni this year and my husband and I always said that this would be the point in our lives where we think about doing something slightly different quite a lot different for me and not very much different for him so come the beginning of august we are packing up our surrey home and we are moving 115 miles down the road to somerset link back to the prizes somerset yarns that's that's what my thinking was behind those prizes so we are buying or we have bought a house we took possession of it a week ago um and we are it's it's a new house so there's not a huge amount to do but we are going to be moving in slowly over the next few weeks and then um in the early part of august we will be moving in properly i am giving up my job and i'm going to do eldenwood craft full time which as many of you will know has been a long held dream of mine and i am so excited i can't wait I have been literally, almost literally, thinking of nothing else in this head of mine. Um, I have so many plans and thoughts and ideas and dreams and so much excitement going on up there at the moment uh, that I am struggling to sleep at night. I'm waking up really early and as soon as I wake up, bing, the brain clocks on. 
but it's um yeah it's it's something i've really wanted to do for such a long time and i've got the opportunity and i really 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 want to make a go of it so you know I've, th there's a huge amount of thinking to do um over the next few weeks and the, the business will no doubt evolve over the months but um yeah i just think at the moment all i can say is look out for more bags more other things um and um yeah just really looking forward to being able to spend some more time be more consistent because i think consistency is one of the problems that i've had in as in not being able to um be very consistent with timings of shop updates podcasting posting on instagram all that sort of thing when you're juggling lots of balls um at at one time so I was doing Eldenwood craft I was working full-time I've been a mother a wife and you know <sighs> so come the summer and into the autumn things will well hopefully if this is good news for you you will see a lot more of me around here I'll have much more time to podcast I do plan to be far more frequent and consistent with my podcasting there will be very regular shop updates. I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to do set days for updates or just add to the shop as and when I make stuff, but I'm beginning to fathom out in my mind how the months are going to go. So you know, one week I'm going to do, mm? the next week I'm gonna do, mm? and then the second half of the month I'm gonna do, mm maybe i'm not going to tell you what mm is but anyway that will um, sort of give you a flavor of how things are going to change um and i quite like to do some sort of studio vlog type podcasts as well so not me just sitting here chatting to you about what i've been making but bringing you behind the scenes of Eldenwood craft and showing you showing you me at work uh yeah so exciting times ahead um what else can i tell you about the move my husband's going to um continue in his job um he's going to work from home remotely i mean the the pandemic couldn't have come at a better time for us really remote home working for him he hasn't been in the office properly since last march um and sorry there's a car outside just wondering what they're looking at anyway yeah my husband hasn't really been in the office for more than you know a couple of half days or something since last march so home working has come at a really good time for him and our future um yeah very exciting how we'll get along working together in the house seven days a week i don't know but I can't wait to try. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm going to say about it for now. But um, yeah, look out for the future of Elden Craft. Um, and I just can I just say it while I'm thinking about it. Thank you for the last few years and all your support. I wouldn't have been able to get to this point and being able to even think about taking it full time if it weren't for you and all the support that you have shown me, whether it's through watching this watch my videos buying bags saying hello on instagram you know it's just been brilliant and i feel so lucky that i'm able to do this and to take it forward to the next stage so yeah big thank you for that um okay what's next what's in my shop so i said i have got a few um bags in my shop i had an update at the beginning of june it was the biggest update i had ever done and it was all the bags were themed around allotments and cutting gardens and that sort of thing and the the, the story behind it is on the listings in my shop but i thought i would just show you I've, I've got a handful of bags left i will show you them some of them and i will offer you a cheeky little discount so i've got some small bags and some tote bags left i think so this is one of my small bags this is in uh, a fabric called the allotment and i just love those little chickens and their chicken house and then on the other side there's um a wheelbarrow 
but yeah, you've got to love chickens on a project bag. Most of my bags, most of the time, are made out of, sort of curtain and upholstery fabric. So they are, they're made to last. They are lined with a simple white, or it's actually ivory canvas. My small bags don't have um, pockets in. My larger project bags do. Uh, the totes that I currently have uh, on offer don't have pockets. So they're quite simple, straightforward, but well made. That's one of my big things and with you know, beautiful fabric. So I've got, um, there's not many of those, there's two or three of those. Um, I've got a handful of this absolutely beautiful cutting garden fabric. I love this fabric so, so much. It's exquisite. It's from a fabric designer. Um, her company is called Leaping Foxes. And again, this, this is a beautiful heavier weight um, sort of curtain or upholstery fabric. I love that. Love that sunflower. So yeah, I've got not many, two of those I think. Uh, I've got a larger size, larger size one in the same fabric. Oh, I have got a large, large um, allotment one. that he he I don't know. can you tell my brain is just not not at the party at the moment anyway yeah so a large one this will my small my small ones fit a couple of skeins quite easily actually this will fit three four five skeins um and then i have got da, 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 i've got one t little one one tote bag. See if I can. Again with the same white ivory canvas inside. Great for taking your knitting out and about or you know going shopping or whatever. And I've also got just with a, a piece from the end, I've got a smaller sort of book bag size. Um which would be great for taking your knitting out as well so yeah so those that's what i've got in my shop at the moment um my shop will close at the end of july just to give me the brain space that i need um with the move um i am making still some other bags i've got some sheet bags i've got one here i've got some sheet bags to go in the shop later this week probably I put a reel up on Instagram this morning, the first reel that I've done showing you in under 60 seconds the process um, for making these bags. Um, it normally takes me about an hour, an hour and a quarter to make a bag after I've cut everything out and interfaced it. Um, so to, to um, trim it down to under a minute was quite a feat, but yeah. So there will be some sheepies going in the shop. That's my one face sheep particular favorite of mine that one but i also have some two face two faced sheep as well he's quite a handsome chap isn't he so yeah but anyway the shop will be closing uh, at the end of july i haven't quite um worked out the date it might literally be the last day in july i don't know yet um but between now and the shop closing I thought it would be a um, nice thing to do just to say thank you to you to offer you a discount code for podcast viewers only um, and that is um, a discount code of 10% off anything in the shop and the code you need to put in at checkout is podcast 10 so I'll write it on screen here somewhere um, yeah, so just a little something from me to you to say thank you. One final thing about my shop. How are we doing for time? Okay. One final thing about my shop, which isn't so great, is the um, Brexity stuff. It drives me up the wall, this. 
Um, but let's not get political about it. But um, there are changes. It's not all about Brexit, but it's got stuff to do with it. Anyway, changes to the EU VAT collection rules mean that from the 1st of July, um, there are things that I have to do in my shop and all businesses do to um, collect VAT from customers in the EU. Now, at the moment, I don't collect VAT from anybody. I don't make enough sales each year. Um, so I am a non-VAT um non-vat business however from the 1st of july everyone selling to a customer in the eu has to charge collect vat and pay that vat into the eu um there is a process for allowing you to do it there's something called a one-stop shop you don't need to know the technicalities however for us in the uk because of brexit it's not so straightforward and we cannot register without paying loads and loads and loads and loads of money to a third party to do it for us we cannot register ourselves for this scheme so i have no choice at the moment other than to close my shop off to eu customers and i am so sorry to have to do that i am looking into whether or not i can use my old etsy shop to facilitate um, sales if there is anyone in the EU who is interested in shopping but I will um, put some news about that on my website and on Instagram when I have worked that out um, but for now um, I apologize but um, EU shopping EU shoppers cannot at the moment purchase from my shop I'm sorry I'm hoping that this is a temporary measure um, but yeah I find the whole that tax thing quite confusing anyway so this just my mind just was <laughs> blown I, I there there have been many 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 posts on instagram over the last few days from other small businesses um saying exactly the same thing they're not in a position to be able to facilitate this change so they are also having to switch shopping off for eu customers it's rubbish i hate it but it's something that we're just going to have to live with for uh, the current period of time. OK, one last section to go, I think, before before we call it a day. I'm going to have a quick drink and then I will be back to answer some questions. OK, I'm just pulling up some questions. So on Instagram this week, I asked if anyone had any questions that they would like me to answer on the podcast today. Uh, I had a handful in, so thank you to everyone. Um, they are uh, two themes, really. The upcoming move and um, some knitting related questions. So let me just run through them. The first one, they're in no particular order. The first one is from uh, Mag, excuse me, excuse me, Mag22HAR. I think I broke that down properly. Mag. I'm going to call you Mag. I don't know if you are called Mag. I'm really sorry. Uh, but you're from Somerset. Hurrah. Um, and you asked, what do I like in a project bag? Which was a really good question. And it did make me think, actually. I had to put some thought into this one. Um, fabric. Good, sturdy fabric I like. Um, which is why probably I, most of my bags are made out of um, sort of heavier weight fabrics. Um, simple, clean lines. Nothing too fussy um good size i don't like having to squash lots of things in i like to have a good size project bag um i like a bag that can itself squash down i like a drawstring rather than a zip um i like a fabric that can tell a story that's one of the things that's i, I spend a really long time looking for fabric for the bags that i sell in my shop um it's really important to me um the fabric choice it, it's probably aside from the actual making of the bags it's it's probably what i spend the longest on in um eldenwood craft um i i love i love looking at fabrics i follow lots of fabric designers um i'm yeah i yeah a fabric is really interesting to me and um if it if it's if it can tell a story all the better if it's made you know if it's of a quality that's going to last 
even better so sort of you know environmentally sustainable and all that sort of thing um yeah yeah so that's probably it fabric and size and um quality of making possibly um next question <laughs> this made me laugh uh zoe this is your question zoe asked if I stand on my beach and wave like mad, will you be able to see me from your new house? <laughs> now, Zoe um, is Zoe from the Pins and Needles podcast. Um, and if you watch that, you will know that Zoe lives on Barry Island, which is in South Wales. Um, Zoe, I can't see you from my new house because the hills are in the way. Um, we will be moving quite close to the Quantock Hills. And over the Quantock Hills is the the is it the bristol channel um and then comes wales so um yeah if i dig a hole in the hills then i might be able to wave however um one time when dennis and i went up to have a look at the house we took a trip up um up to the the north somerset coast and we stood on the shoreline just outside a place called minehead um and i looked on my map and i said to my husband that's Barry Island over there. Zoe lives over there. Um, so I can see Zoe, I'll be able to see you and I'll be able to see Angela and I'll be able to see Jenny. So yeah, I will give you a wave when I'm up on the coastline. <laughs> um, next question is from um, Beryl, Mrs. Beehorn. Beryl asked, what's your... What's your preferred knitting style? Have you tried others at all? I always want to knit faster. Um, yeah, knitting faster is something we all aim for, isn't it? I am a flicker. So I, um, I can't find, my blanket project is under a pile of stuff. I'm not going to get it out, but I knit by flicking my yarn over my needles rather than taking my hand off and wrapping it. And I, I hold my yarn in my right hand, so I'm an English style knitter. And actually I find that quite quick. Um, I'm quite comfortable. Um, my speed of knitting is not too bad. I have tried continental knitting. I cannot get the hang of the tension. It's odd because I can, I can tension yarn when I'm crocheting in my left hand, but I cannot tension yarn in my left hand when I'm knitting. I, I struggle with that. I have tried quite a lot. Um, and when I've done colour work, I have just about managed it. And I know it probably is down to spending, you know, practising it more. But um, actually the speed I get with flicking is pretty good um, and it's comfortable for me. So yeah, I, um, I quite like flicking. I did try, um, oh, what was it? Portuguese knitting where you loop the yarn over your neck and you purl using your thumb it's quite ingenious and um, you can get up a bit of speed but excuse me <coughs> I found it a little bit not quite natural and um, so I haven't tried that for a while but there are so many other techniques aren't there um, and I think, you know, once once I have more time for knitting in a, a couple of months time, it might be something that I'm quite interested in doing, sort of looking at other other styles and ways of knitting. Knitting Heather said, where would you like to see yourself in five years time? All oh, my battery's about to go. Uh, good luck with the move. Hang on a minute. Okay, right, just charged up my battery, um, hopefully long enough to get through the last of the questions. So I was um, about to answer this question from Knitting Heather, who asks, where would you like to see yourself in five years time? And good luck with the move. Thank you very much. Five years time, I would very much like to think that we have, um, made a happy home for ourselves in Somerset, that we are in the same place, that um, Eldenwood Craft has gone from strength to strength and that we are happy and healthy. Um, yeah, as I said earlier, it's a bit 
bit of a big shift so for it to have gone okay and for it to have gone well enough for me to still be doing it in five years time is um all that I can ask for really and that the family is healthy that Covid is gone it's not going to be gone is it but you, you know what I mean we're back to something a little bit more normal would be good um yeah all sorts of things I'd like um like to see where um, oh dear I'd like my head to be screwed on a little bit tighter um I'd like to be podcasting more frequently I'd like for this to get easier um but anyway yeah just happy healthy Elton Woodcraft to be doing well family to be healthy um you guys to still be here that would be nice um and me to be able to say hello to you on a more frequent basis um Elizabeth has asked what is your favorite fabric that you have ever used in your bags um the current ones um I enjoyed some of the um allotment bags actually uh some of them were really popular and I will probably bring some of them back a little later on however um I have pulled out of my box of project bags two of my favorite fabrics that I have used um first off is that one do you remember that I don't quite know why this doesn't have a drawstring in it um Oh, I absolutely adored that fabric. I, um, I, it's not made anymore. It was a seven berry fabric. Um, and I managed, oh, I couldn't find any, well, I, I bought some in the UK. I then couldn't find any more in the UK. And the only place I could find it in the whole wide world was a fabric shop in New Zealand. So literally on the other side of the world. And I ordered the whole of that fabric shop stock of this particular fabric. I can't remember how many metres it was. Five or six maybe? Can't quite remember. But I was going to get hold of that fabric no matter what. And um, sold it all. Shipped it, the, yeah, the lady shipped it all the way from New Zealand. I remember it being very reasonable shipping. Um, but yeah, so that is definitely a favourite. Sheet bags um i suspect i wouldn't well the sheet bags are really popular and i love the fact that they are so popular and they are kind of a supposed bit of a signature bag for me so i have to love them and i do um the other one that i like is this um uh woodland cottage bag um fabric it's it's a huge print um with a really large repeat so all the bags pretty much are unique when I use this fabric um it's a very woolly sort of oh, poor use of terminology but um the, the the fabric it's not cotton I don't quite know what it is and it's got um machine embroidered all these pictures are machine embroidered so it's a stunning fabric um little country cottage scenes woodland cottage scenes so yeah they're probably my favorites i would say um sue asked two questions sue knows me very well <laughs> sue said what's your favorite color blue green gray or brown uh all of the above um yeah sue you've got my number um blue green gray or brown blue green gray or brown really it's like choosing between your favorite children i honestly don't know at the moment green and brown are in my good books um and blue and gray are um have taken a little bit of a back seat although you wouldn't think that from the projects i've shown you today um but yeah i quite <laughs> in fact i've been looking for a lace weight yarn to knit um a particular project and i'm desperate to do it in a really sort of chocolatey brown with a lot of depth to it and i just can't find it anywhere um i want to do sort of a two a two color version it, it's the light as air um wrap shawl by um, paulina caru who is lena knits on instagram it's a beautiful long um that sort of wide lace weight modern lace weight wrap um 
she uses two shades of grey I think I'd like to do it in a darker and a lighter brown but very I've really I've got my head um, firmly on to finding this really rich chocolatey lace weight lace weight um, yarn and I just can't find it anywhere in fact if anyone knows of any either UK hand dyers or commercial yarn even where that someone who does a really chocolatey lace weight yarn I'd love to know because um, I would be round there like a shot um, so yeah possibly brown browns and greens at the moment although blues and greys will um, come back uh, Sue also asked why have we chosen Somerset to move to that's a really good question and it was I wouldn't say that there wasn't a lot of thought that went into it, but it was quite an easy decision. Um, Dennis has got family that live in the southwest of England, um, so he and he's he was brought up in the southwest by the coast, and he was always really keen to move back down there. So that was one of the reasons. He needed to be within a certain length drive um, to get back to his um, office in London. Um, or in the southeast, it's not quite London. Um, so that played a part. Uh, we wanted country living rather than in a in a town. We, um, I guess, housing stock dictated where we could move to. We wanted somewhere pretty that would inspire us, that we could get to the coast easily. Um, all those sorts of things and Somerset is where we ended up it was it had we found a house it was the right price it's close enough to his family it's further away from my mum um, but I'm hoping that not being tied to a nine-to-five office job means that I can get up to see her a bit more often yeah so that was Somerset really and it's I'm really glad we chose Somerset because everybody without fail everybody has said Wow, Somerset's really lovely, really pretty. And certainly the drives that we've had around Somerset um, have been really sort of jaw-dropping, really pretty, some really pretty picture box villages. Um, I can't wait to get up onto Exmoor and explore and go walking. Can't wait to go and walk along the coast, all that sort of thing. So yeah, that's, that's why we chose Somerset, Sue. There's also a lot of knitting that goes on in Somerset. Um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of the people that I follow and are friends with on Instagram live in Somerset, which is really exciting. Um, and nearby, so Devon and Dorset and, um, uh, up in Bristol. Yeah, so there's a, I think there's a more of a knitting community down there than in Surrey. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, final question, uh, another one that made me laugh from uh, Gaynor, and quite appropriate actually uh, from the conversation we've just been having. Gaynor has said, will you be my playmate when we are almost neighbours? <laughs> Excuse me. And Gaynor, absolutely, like a shot I will. Yeah, um, yeah, I look forward to meeting you and meeting up with you and lots of other people actually. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be fun. So I think, I think... The future of Eldenwood Craft, I think, um, will be will be exciting. I think there will be more opportunity for me to get out and about and meet people and do more fun, exciting, nitty things. So I cannot wait. I've probably said I can't wait, and it's really exciting loads of times today. Uh, but that's yeah, that's where we are with life and things. So. I'm going to call it a day here. I'm going to get this uploaded. It probably won't be uploaded until early in the week, but if I can get it uploaded sooner, I will. Can I say thank you very much for watching? Uh, it's, as I said uh, earlier, it's been three months since I've recorded. I was very rusty. I um, apologize for that. I will be back probably not until after we move now, but you never know. Who knows how things will turn out. Um, but I will be back as soon as I can. And um, from the summer, there will be more frequent podcasts. Hurrah! <laughs> um, so thank you for watching. If you have liked the episode, uh, there might be one or two of you. Please do click on the like button. If you are not subscribed, 
and you would like to know when the next episode and future episodes are uploaded click on the subscribe button thank you i've already said that three times now i think but thank you for watching it means the world to me that i can come and sit here and talk to you about my knitting and you put up with it i mean goodness if you've watched all the way through to the end today well done you <laughs> um but yeah it really does mean the world and um yeah cut see you next time <laughs> bye